Welcome to the 40k PR project. In today's video, I will be going over the Lunar Lancer. Here's going to be my power rank and my stats. My gear is going to be a crystal level 4 set with attack speed and movement speed on all pieces of gear. My ring is going to be a crystal level 3 ring with magic find and the need for speed hidden effect. Scorpius is going to be my ally because both damage and movement speed. I was using Star Rubble, but I was actually noticing that Scorpius was actually more efficient with my Lunar Lancer. Permanent Torch is going to be my banner because I always use this on every single class. Free Range Electrolytic Crystal as my food because easy 300 light. Martial and Trail Basin as my emblem. Martial because of damage, Trail Basin because of movement speed. Conjurous Crystal Bile as my flask of choice because I have high magic find. And the personal song Bard subclass because it's the best end game subclass in the entirety of the game. Now, that's going to be my equipment. Now, onto my gems. My empowered gem abilities are going to be Explosive Epilogue, Fire Disc, Class Gem, and Vampire and Vanquisher. Explosive Epilogue, the reason I do have this is because I actually did have this empowered gem way before the Luna Lancer rework. So, the Luna Lancer before the rework, it actually benefited greatly from having Explosive Epilogue. So, I just took with this empowered gem ability. It still is very helpful for the Luna Lancer because it does help out with the Luna Lancer without the ultimate ability with the basic attack, giving both more crowd control and some extra damage. Pirate this is going to be the best empowered gem ability in the entirety of the game, giving both damage and movement speed very easy to proc. Clash gem because why not this extra damage. And Vampire and Banquisher also because it's obvious it's a speed farming class. My Star Shard build, you're going to see it right now on screen. I already have a video of just going over my Star Shard build, but the video that I showcased was with 37 Celestial Sphere, but all of the main nodes are still available right there. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, I'll leave that in the description down below. Now, for the costume combination. My costume combination is going to be the Crimson Corsair as my costume, which is a costume that you can buy from the store for 1,250 credits. My hairstyle is going to be the Captain's Cavalier from the store by Celestial Skull, which is going to be a bonus store pad that was originally added back in December 2020. This hairstyle is not part of any costume, this is just an extra hairstyle that you do get from the store. And it is going to be part of the store category rather than being a costume hairstyle. And also a little fun fact, this is the same hairstyle that I used on my Revenant video. And my weapon style is going to be the Whirlwind's Wake, which is going to be a resplendent style. So in other words, it's going to be a very common style that it should be found everywhere. And that should cover everything that I do have equipped on my Lunar Lancer. Now, onto some final thoughts. So, how does the Lunar Lancer fare inside Uber 11? So, I got a really, really long list because the Lunar Lancer, there's so many things for me to actually just talk about the Lunar Lancer. So, this is going to be a really long session. So, strap yourself in because I'm going to be separating them into two big separate categories. It's going to be the Lunar Lancer without the need for speed and with the need for speed. So, let's start off with this. So the Lunar Lancer without the need for speed is going to be average, around average in terms of speed farming. And let me explain. So I recently decided to take it upon myself and do the math and check every single mathematical movement speed that you can get on every single class. It took me a long to do, by the way. And the maximum Lunar Lancer movement speed without need for speed, and believe it or not, is actually below average without the ultimate ability and above average with the ultimate ability. So without the ultimate ability is slower than every single class in the entirety of the game, which has a movement speed buff of 16 or below, which is a lot of the classes. It's like 10 classes or something like that. Like even something the Gunslinger can achieve higher movement speed than the Lunar Lancer without need for speed and without the ultimate ability. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, however, the ultimate ability, of course, it makes it faster than a lot of the other classes in the game, running a little bit faster than Dino Tamer with Troubles and Emblem active, uh, but however, it's tied to the ultimate ability. In the case of the Lunar Lancer, maintaining ultimate ability can be quite a pain. Of course, I'm just going to be covering the Need for Speed in a separate category later in this video, so I will just leave it timestamp if you're just interested in me just covering the Need for Speed, but the Need for Speed is just going to be going and referencing stuff that I will be talking about right now. Anyways, outside of the surprising movement speed on the class, this class also suffered from a lot of inconsistency. And you might be asking, why? Uh, well, I'm going to be starting with the Lunar Lancer without the ult. So, first of all, the basic attack. Uh, the basic attack of the Lunar Lancer without the ultimate ability does slightly above average damage at 2.8, uh, slightly above average in terms of attacks per second at 1.75 at base, I know it does cap at 240% because of the crescent combo animation, but it's still above average despite all of that. The standard 6 block range, and it's okay in crowd control. The stab it has is pretty bad in crowd control, but the crescent combo can be quite good. 
So yeah, the basic attack is just solid, nothing too special, but nothing bad either. There's plenty of basic attack in the entirety of the game that does either higher damage, equal or higher speed, and in some cases just both. Like for example, Knight is just faster and stronger, Vanguard is around equal speed but stronger, Candy Barbarian is stronger and, uh, and the same as Vanguard, and Dino Tamer the same as all of the other classes except Knight, and heck, even the Revenant, despite being slower, it does a lot more damage. It's good and all, but once you actually do realize that the only source of damage from the Luna Lancer without the ultimate ability comes from the basic attack. The reason being is because both of the other abilities is grapples, and both of the grapples have quite a long cooldown, so they're not spammable ability, they're not ability that you can use for other stuff, it's just ability with long cooldown. Regular grapple with 6 seconds, Lunar Infused grapple with 15, well, technically 10 seconds of cooldown, but Lunar Infused grapple is tied to Lunar Leap, and Lunar Leap is 15 seconds of cooldown. Anyways, essentially your only source of consistent damage is going to come out from your basic attack. And once again, it does 2.8 times damage multiplier, slightly higher uh, above average in terms of attack speed, and okay crowd control at best. It is going to be similar to something like the Bard. Uh, the Bard in stage 1 basic attack, it does 2.5 times damage, which is average, and it does 1.5 base attacks per second, which is also average. This one is also around the same realm, 1.75 instead of 1.5 and in terms of attacks per second, and 2.8 times damage instead of 2.5 in terms of damage output. And Bard obviously gets increased quite easily in stage 2, does 4.5, which it already becomes way better than the Lunar Lancer. So if you thought that the Bard lacked in damage, then this class is quite similar if you don't include the ultimate ability. Anyways, let's just move on to the other ability, so starting off with the Grapple. So Grapple is, honestly speaking, only useful as some extra mobility since you can use Grapple to launch yourself vertically, and even though that might not be as valuable as it used to be because Volatile Bounder exists, it doesn't do a lot of damage, I do believe it does around 3.5 times damage multiplier, so it's not particularly strong and it doesn't have a lot of use, and you can use it to build up speed, but why would you? It, this ability is very susceptible to lag, it is also very susceptible to knockback, making you miss your target a lot, so it's not that good if you want to build up speed. And once again, it does have a 6 second cooldown, so it's not a spammable ability, unless you're using the hidden effect that actually just removes all of the cooldown, but let's be real, no one is going to be using that hidden effect when Need for Speed is in the game. Grapple is just a gimmick and you can use it for fun if you want to use it and if you want to do it the more power to you but because going full spider-man can be just quite fun speaking of spider-man what that's probably the worst transition that i've ever done but let's roll with it anyways lunar leap let's talk about it also as well lunar infused grapple uh because the main reason you will be using lunar leap is mainly because lunar infused grapple so lunar leap alone is a pretty bad ability you activate it you leap upwards damaging all enemies around you i do believe you also do 3.5 times damage so the same damage as the regular grapple and after you do leap you gain a, a slow fall for i do believe like an eternity or something like that and yeah this ability is going to sound very familiar leaping upwards doing damage to all enemies around you giving slow fall once you are up in the air yeah, but unlike Blast Jump that doesn't have a cooldown, does 6 times damage multiplier, the Lunar Leap is 15 seconds of cooldown, does less damage, and slow fall, which is not particularly good if you're looking for speed farming. Because if you're doing a slow fall, you're just stuck in midair, and if you're stuck in midair, that's not particularly good. So, in other words, yes, it's just pretty bad on its own. Well, once again, the vertical part was a benefit but volatile bounder got added into the game and now vertical mobility is not too special on this ability anyways once you do activate lunar leap your regular grapple is going to be transformed into the lunar infused grapple it has its own separate cooldown and everything so it's just going to work exactly the like the regular grapple in terms of like range and functionality but the only thing is that this one does eight times damage multiplier which is high and the cooldown is also got increased to 10 seconds instead of the regular grapple 6 seconds of cooldown. Even though, once again, technically 15 seconds of cooldown because it is tied to activating Lunar Leap, which does have a 15 second cooldown. But that's beside the point. If you successfully hit an enemy with the Lunar Infused Grapple, then you will get a physical damage buff of 85 bonus percentage, which is 1.85 times your base physical damage, which is a lot. It's a huge increase. And it does last for 12 seconds, which is really good but you have to hit an enemy in order for you to actually get this buff. It's not activating, it's hit. So, although the same problem that I mentioned with the grapple, with being very susceptible to lag, 
being very susceptible to knockback and causing you to miss that can happen with the lunar infused grapple and i'm just going to mention this real quick that the need for speed hidden effect only replaces the bonus percentage damage that you do get whenever you do hit an enemy and replace it with movement speed percentage but i'll get more into that in a little bit yeah once again eight times damage multiplier is high 50 block range is really really far away and does have a really good radius but again it's just tied to lunar leap and having all of the same problem with regular grapple being susceptible to lack and knockback which is not good considering that this ability has a long cooldown now you can see that without the ultimate ability lunar lancer is pretty much a basic attack type class with long cooldown abilities and those abilities are not that good considering the long cooldown but once we move on into the ultimate ability you're going to see that Luna Lancer just becomes like a ridiculous burst damaging machine. It's just not even funny. So Lunar Form, your ultimate ability. So the way that you activate this ability is by gathering Moon Power, which is your energy. And you do that by doing damage. It doesn't have a cooldown how many enemies you hit. So if you do hit like six enemies, then you're going to get energy for each of the enemies. Or using any of the abilities that I just previously mentioned, the Grapples and the Lunar Leap. Once you do fill out your energy bar, you can activate your Lunar Form. Once you do activate it, your energy just starts depleting over time until it reaches zero. And once you do that, then you have to just repeat the process in filling out all of your energy. Or do the little trick that a lot of Lunar Lancers players do, which is going to be going into build mode to deactivate your ultimate ability prematurely so you don't spend all of your energy. So it just helps you out in maintaining the ultimate ability a little bit more consistently. Once you actually are in Lunar Form, first of all, you get higher physical damage i believe it you get like something like 175 percent in the bonus percentage damage which is so overkill it's not even funny 30 base movement speed and you take 50 percent less damage while you're in your ultimate ability all of those numbers make no sense and you also get a, like a new set of abilities and a new basic attack which i will be covering all of that so strap yourself in because the lunar lancer in the ultimate ability form is a completely different character than without the ultimate ability let's start off with the basic attack on lunar form so the new basic attack is going to be a lot slower it does a lot more damage i do believe it's like 6.8 times damage which is really high and if you hold it down it's going to keep doing 7.5 times damage continuously it's the same thing as the vanguardian with the uppercut that after the uppercut if you hold down the basic attack all of the basic attack are going to be doing the same damage as the uppercut this one is the same after the second swing all of the basic attack is going to be doing 7.5 until you let go of the attack button but the attacks per second gets lowered down to one attacks per second at base and the crow control just becomes really good it's an absolute monster of a basic attack because it does have the strength of a fate trickster basic with the crowd control of a knight basic attack which is both really high and really great crowd control and not to mention this is all of this while having way higher base physical damage because lunar form gives you a lot of physical damage so in other words once you're in ultimate ability just expect to delete all types of enemies inside the 11 outside of that every ability changes the grapple changes into the eclipse spear which allows you to instead of just do a grapple just throw down a spear that will do damage to all enemies around it does 5.5 times damage it's pretty good ability on its own but for the most part it's just going to be mediocre for the lunar lancer considering that it does take uh, energy whenever you do activate it so it makes your ultimate ability last less and it does less damage than already the basic attack so there's no point in doing that then it, you do have the lunar leap changes into the lunar slam very cool ability but it's just quite useless it takes way too much moon power it's very slow and just like all of the grapple is very susceptible to knock back lag and all of that and if you do manage to hit it does 11.5 times damage and it stuns enemies for like four seconds which is so unnecessary like what and lastly is going to be the blessing of the moon which is the old ultimate ability on the luna lancer before the rework so what it does press the button you summon a spear that drops into the ground at the location that you're aiming and just like the candy barbarian's ultimate ability and ice crash for ice sage and once it lands it's going to deal damage to all enemies around it and it's going to leave an eight block radius on the area where the spear lands and it's going to do a damage over time and it also summons meteorite that also does damage Honestly, none of that actually matters, especially in Uber 11. What really matters is the fact that you can just throw it down the same way as you did before. And the initial damage is the only important one. So you can do the same thing that you did before the rework as in throwing down Blessing of the Moon and do one to two hits with the Crescent combo 
to do insane amounts of burst damage. It's pretty much a guaranteed one shot, even at lower stat, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. I believe Blessing of the Moon does like 13 or 15 times damage, I believe it's 13 times damage. Then you include that with the basic attack with higher physical damage, yeah, you just pretty much expect one shot, that's all I gotta say. If you throw down Blessing of the Moon, throw down Crescent Combo, just expect everything to just get deleted that is in front of you. But the only problem is that it takes quite a bit of moon power or energy when you're in your ultimate ability and also it does have a 40 second cooldown the same old cooldown which is a lot of cooldown uh, but once it does work it's ridiculous but obviously the downtime is a lot for the most part you're going to be using this once every ultimate ability so yeah that's essentially all of the new ability and that's everything on the lunar lancers kit and if you do notice just like the draco and the fate trickster there's a lot of things that this class has really going for but there's a lot of big negatives are, uh, surrounding it. So no ultimate ability means that you are basically only using basic attack to do damage. While the basic attack is solid, it's not great either. Both abilities without the ultimate ability have long cooldown and the benefits are really not that good. Once you actually transform into your ultimate ability, it becomes absolutely ridiculous with really strong basic attack, extremely good potential burst damage, but the problem is that it's tied to the ultimate ability which maintaining it it can be somewhat bad it's inconsistent it's somewhat of a pain uh, but even though that you can change into build mode to maintain the ultimate ability a little bit better it's still not that great nonetheless it's still a pretty good dungeon grinder without any for speed but it's nowhere near the best. I would probably say around average, maybe slightly above average. Now let's start talking about need for speed. So need for speed, very important. It can be quite the game changer for the Lunar Lancer. However, the reason I wanted to talk about the abilities first is I wanted to pick, paint you a picture on everything that you need to know about the Lunar Lancer and what the character can do without need for speed and what are going to be all of the shortcomings that the class has. And the problem with Need for Speed is going to be that it is tied to the non-ultimate ability Lunar Lancer. And we already know all of the problems with the Lunar Lancer without the ultimate ability. So like I mentioned before, the way that you activate Need for Speed is that you have to hit with the Lunar Infused Grapple. So you do need to activate Lunar Leap, then hit with the Lunar Infused Grapple, and once you do actually do get, you're going to get an 85% or 1.85 times your base movement speed for 12 seconds. Which, I don't need to tell you that those are big numbers. It's by far the highest movement speed buff in the entirety of the game. However, it's tied to Lunar Infused Grapple. And you have to take into account about Lunar Infused Grapple. A, it's a 15 second cooldown and you have to hit it, otherwise you don't get any movement speed buff. B, the fact that this is both very susceptible to lag and knockback can be quite annoying, especially if you're trying to aim the enemy, if you're trying to get the buff, because again, you have to hit with the Lunar Infused Grapple. And C, that if you want to take full benefits, you have to kill with the Lunar Infused Grapple. Otherwise, the movement speed is not going to be as impressive as it can be. So I think if you don't kill with Lunar Infused Grapple, your max base movement speed with all movement speed buff including Bard subclass and being outside of the ultimate ability, the only thing that will proc is going to be Need for Speed, Bard subclass, Vampire and Vanquisher and Trailblazing if you don't kill, if you are out of your ultimate ability, which will make the maximum movement speed that is with full star shot and everything by the way, is going to be around 408 movement speed which is pretty high but it's only for 3 seconds and it will immediately just go down to 368 movement speed at its maximum. That is with everything procs and which is slightly less than Bard's maximum movement speed, which is still great, but seeing that all of the shortcomings from the Lunar Lancer, they might not be so great after all. Either way, there's so, way too many things to keep in mind if you want to have this ability active, which brings me to the point that I said at the beginning, inconsistencies. This is a problem with the Lunar Lancer. If you don't kill with the Lunar Infused Grapple, then it's not going to give you all of those movement speed buff, which is the thing that will allow you to achieve over 5 to 600 movement speed, which is at that point is just overkill. But that's essentially going to be the problem with the Lunar Lancer. If you don't kill with those abilities or with the Lunar Infused Grapple, you're not going to get buffed. 
If you don't get buff, you're not going to move faster than every single class in the entirety of the game. If you're not faster than every class in the entirety of the game, then every single class is going to outpace the Lunar Lancer because the Lunar Lancer's strong suit is not going to be the insane burst damage without the ultimate ability, the consistent damage that it can just bring, the consistent kill type. What brings the Lunar Lancer just above every single character is Need for Speed's 85% movement speed increase. And if that's not active, then the character is not that great. It's not too consistent. And yeah, that's the thing with this class. I'm just going to be showing you a little clip with this class and you're going to see the difference with and without Need for Speed. All of this just happened in one clip. And you can tell that there's way too much that you have to consider and the difference is way too high. When it works, amazing really really ridiculous but it's not consistent enough for you to maintain that movement speed despite all of that despite all of those inconsistency and all of those problems need for speed is just way too good so i will still probably just make this class around my third best overall speed farming class in the game with need for speed active uh, because just the ridiculousness of the ultimate ability and the need for speed movement speed that you can actually just get but yeah, the problem is just that it's far too inconsistent to be considered the best speed farming class in the game. Even if you do have all of those things active, there's other classes, Shadowhunter, Candy Barbarian, like even the Knight or something like that. All those classes are just consistent. The only thing that the Luna Lancer has above every single class is the speed. But yeah, that's it. This is a longer video because not only need for speed is a very common topic uh, amongst a lot of players let me just tell you that much uh, the class itself is quite interesting honestly being the fact that it's so different between ultimate ability and non-ultimate ability and maintaining all of that is you know quite interesting that's why this video was a little bit longer uh, but i wanted to take my time to explain everything that is the lunar lancer and where does it stand in Uber 11 in my own personal opinion once again these are my opinions if you do have your own opinions you can list it in the comment section down below so that's going to be everything for me thank you once again for watching thank you for sticking around as always make sure to leave a like subscribe for more content like this thank you for 4.6k let's go into 4.7k once again thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time take care and keep on hunting and this has been the 40k pr video on the lunar lancer